I'm here with um, Professor Baez de Luna, who is a senior investigator in the uh, Catalan Institute for Cardiovascular Research. Antonio, thank you very much for thank joining you. us today. Uh, Professor Baez de Luna has um, been working on um, intra-arterial um, conduction disturbances for many, many years, and his work has been published um, in many, many important journals. But recently, there has been a sort of a, um, a very important communication to um, major journals in relation to this discovery. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have discovered? Well, this, uh, this starts in the 70s when I was doing uh, a lot of uh, interpretation of vector calculations. And I realized that uh, the p loop in some patients was going up instead of on to close just at the same level as the starting point. So we discussed this with several people, especially with Paul Piège from France. He was described that this may be due to a retrograde activation of the Vevatium because there was a block in the zone of Bagman Bandol. So then I decided to continue the research started by Professor Poex and colleagues in France, and I realized that there is many people that present this type of block but you know that the P wave is the Cinderella of the ECG and nobody takes care of, her, of, of the P wave and because it's small, you need amplifying glass and I was using amplifying glass and take 84 ca cases published in Journal of uh, Metrocardiography the criteria and then in 88 the association with uh, supraventricular arrhythmias when this type of inductive block is presented in patients with what we are saying now. Right. Uh, so when you discovered this in this, uh, this atrial conduction disturbance, you knew that you were actually facing an important sort of uh, discovery in terms of clinical application. Yes, for me it was already an important clinical application because I knew that uh, if uh, a patient with advanced heart disease presents this type of intensity of work, this means that in the near future he will present uh, atrial fibrillation. Right, but so it was a predictor of a predictor, atrial fibrillation. It's a predictor, uh, especially when it's present in patients with advanced injective block, and then also the duration of the, P wave, of the P wave is also longer, longer than 160. Okay, and can clinicians measure this easily, or you need a very sophisticated no, no, tool no, no, to no, measure no, this? Not at all, only okay. the eye. Uh, it's a small the P wave, but if, if you need some amplifying glass, you can use so that would be enough. glass, but that would be enough. this is enough. Uh, so, uh, at, at some moment, two or three years ago, uh, Professor Patanchuk from Canada uh, decided to follow these investigations and he, he realized that it was the time to study that, especially because the interest of people for adiofibrillation has been increasing a lot. In the 70s, adiofibrillation yeah, was, was no... rubbish. It was yeah. rubbish. Uh, people was giving and digitalis. Not anticoagulation, nothing. Right, but, but now we uh, have lots of medications that can be and used. Also yeah, and also and, and also prevention of, of, exactly. of, of, of stroke, that is an important issue. And I have to say that uh, Dr. Valenciuk in, in, in Canada and Dr. Uh, Conde in Argentina and in Brazil, other people, and also finally to publish several papers, uh, the editor of Journal of Medical Cardiology and Juba Bakalova published an editorial saying that this has to be named Bayer syndrome. Really, it is a syndrome. The name of Bayer, okay, I am glad, but I am not fighting for that. I am fighting for the syndrome. Because okay. much probably this could be another risk factor of atrial fibrillation that could be put. Okay, so an easy, an easy phenomenon to identify, but the very important one that clinicians can identify and which has uh, clinical implications and they, w would this mean that you would perhaps anticoagulate somebody in sinus rhythm if they exactly. have this conduction uh, disturbance? Exactly, exactly. This is the, the, the main objective of us to demonstrate that patients with this type of interactive law uh, that I am saying are presented in patients with advanced heart disease in sinus rhythm, uh, in our opinion, they uh, have all of them a lot of premature uh, contractions in photo monitoring and they, in, in our opinion, need anticoagulation because in a few months or at least, or, uh, or no more than two or three years, we will present that. They will develop the atrial fibrillation. But of course, you will need to carry out um, sort of 
well-designed clinical studies in order to confirm that. Especially, uh, I think the confirmation that this happened is already done with this paper, but what is not confirmed is that this, this may represent, uh, if we anticoagulate these patients, a decrease in the number of strokes. Yeah. But this is an this important is science. Yeah. So this is an important, in exactly. an important focus for the for exactly. the future. This is the science to demonstrate that if we are anticoagulating patients in uh, sinus rhythm, but with a high risk of atrophication, this would prevent a lot of strokes. Yes. But however, you know that has been demonstrated that the atrophication is not the cause of uh, the stroke. Uh, when a stroke appears in the uh, 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 devices that are uh, recording during years the heart rhythm has been said, has been demonstrated that usually there is not a patient in atrophication. Also, he has paroxysmal. Yes, of course, of course. I think but that the embolization depends very much on the on the on the sort of this. Uh, episodes of, of, of AS, but in any in any in any case, I think your 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 findings are of, of, of great interest, and they have been um, summarized recently in your review paper in the European Cardiology Review uh, from Radcliffe Cardiology. I, I cardiology, have, and I, I we have been very very pleased to do that because I think this journal will be uh, 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 given this message to a, a young cardiologist in Europe and also to a senior ones. Because the same a very important message indeed. Thank you very much, Antonio. Thank you, thank thank you very thank much. You thank you very much. Thank you.